Good afternoon. Welcome to Licensing Subcommittee. Can I just start off with some protocols for remote hearings? Only speak when invited to by the chair. If you wish to speak, please raise your hand and direct all communication via the chair. Please ensure that your mics are muted when you're not speaking. When speaking, please be succinct and do not exceed the allocated time frames. If referring to any written submissions, please yeah. refer to the specific page number in the agenda pack. Any new evidence can only be submitted at the discretion of the chair and agreement of all parties. If you're having any technical difficulties, please use please use the chat function to alert the meeting or dial in using the details in the inv invitation. Please do not use the chat function for putting formal questions to the subcommittee. If I can start off with the first item on the agenda, can we elect a chair, please? Can I nominate Councillor Smith, please? Thank you very much. <clears throat> That's great, Absolutely. thank you. Okay, so welcome everyone to uh, this licensing subcommittee meeting, uh, 20th of December, two o'clock. Uh, we're considering some tens today. Um, on the inside of your agenda pack, you should see the actual agenda itself, which is there. Um, you can have, that's either online or hard copy. Um, so we'll just go around and just introduce ourselves, officers and members. So I'm Gilbert Smith, Councillor Gilbert Smith, Stoke Newington Ward and Chair of Licensing. Uh, Councillor Virginia Thomas. Well, good afternoon all. I'm Councillor Susan Fadano Thomas. Thank you. And Councillor Root. I'm Councillor Penny Root and I represent Victoria Ward. Thank you very much. Amanda? Um, good afternoon. My name is Amanda North from Legal Services, supporting members this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you. And Suba? Good afternoon. I'm Suba Shri Ramana, Principal Licensing Officer, and I will be presenting the report this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. And R Rabia? I'm Rabia Khatan. I'm the Governance Officer. Thank you very much. And I think our officers, we've got Kadeen. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kadeen Jackson, Environmental Protection Officer. <clears throat> Thank you, Kadeen. And Gertz? And Gertz Paddy from the Environmental Protection Team. Thank you. Fantastic. And then on screen, I've got, uh, is it Amir? Yeah, good afternoon. Yep. Do you want to just say who you are? I mean, I think yeah, I know who you are, but just, just if you could just, just for the record. Good afternoon. I'm Amir Zahr. I'm Head of Operations on the basement floor, Copycat. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Head of Operations. And then is it Awat Tesfa? Sorry, I, I can't hear you, but you seem to. Yeah. Can anyone else not hear Awat? Can Mario help? Oh, yeah. Mario is our IT person. So thank you, Mario. Mario, could you, do you know what's happening here with uh, Mr. Tesfa? Still can't hear you. No, I can't hear him either. No, still can't hear you. Maybe he needs to leave the meeting and re, re um, uh, come back in so that he can uh, maybe reset. Yeah, try that um, if you can hear us. Can you hear us? Just nod. You can hear us, yeah? Yeah, why don't you log out and try and log back in again and we'll wait for you. So just to bear, bear with us, folks, just uh, be patient for a few minutes. Just let them have a chance to log back in again. Yeah, try that. Uh, you're on mute. Is that better? Yeah, we can hear you now. Okay, Excellent. so Thank would you, you like to introduce that yourself and how would you like to be referred to, Mr. Tesfa? Um, Mr. Tesfa is absolutely appropriate. Thank you very much, um, um, Councillor. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm Awat Tesfa and um, I, I run the Copper Cats um, ground floor and also um, the owner of the, 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 the ground floor and the, and the basement and I, I work alongside Amir. Um, um, okay. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, thank you very much everyone for that um so we'll just move on to agenda item two which is apologies for absence there are no apologies today um and then declarations of interest agenda item three any declarations of interest from members just not none shake your head if not none from me none from me thank you no, no. 
Okay, thank you very much, Councillor Root. Um, agenda item four, minutes of the previous meeting. Can we agree the minutes of the meeting held on the 31st of October 23, please? Can we agree those members? Just nod. Yep, fantastic. Thank you very much. Um, and then the hearing procedure, um, we'll just go through that very quickly. Uh, it works in, in various steps. So step uh, one is the uh, introduction appointment of chair, which we've done. Step two, the principal licensing officer will outline the report. Um, and then we will have step uh, three, where the applicant would present their case. And step four, responsible authorities will come in. These are five minutes each, by the way. Um, and then we'll move on to a discussion phase, which will uh, take place over 15 minutes. Uh, step eight, final points of clarification. Um, and then that will be the end of the meeting. We will go off and decide uh, the verdict. OK, so can we start, please, with the principal licensing officer just to outline the report for these three hens today? Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. So the item we are going to consider this afternoon is for three temporary notices, which were given to the licensing service in respect of the premises for the Copper Cats, 574 to 576 Kingsland Road, for an event to be held on 24th of December 23, from one minute past midnight and finishing at 4 a.m. The second event on the 27th of December 23, one minute past midnight and finishing at 4 a.m. And the third event is on the 1st of January 2024, again from one minute past midnight and finishing at 4 a.m. Um, environment protection has ob have objected to all these tents. That's why th this meeting is for. Um, we have not received any other additional information as such. Um, I would like to just make a bit of clarification. There is a minor typo error in the three notices uh, which was published. The start time of the event is not 1 a.m. It's one minute past midnight. So I apologize for this typo error. And I have nothing else to add. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, it looks like we're going to be considering the 24th and the 1st uh, together. Um, is that correct, Suma? No, Chair. We'll be considering all those three of them, 24th, 27th, as well as... No, no, no. But on, on this particular item, um, uh, I've got the 24th and the 1st of January, and then we'll go on to the 27th. Or do we, should we do each one individually? What's your recommendation? Um, Chair, if I can make a suggestion, is yes. that it's for all the same premises, the times are all the same, so I, I don't know if you want to consider them all together in that um, you consider the, whether or not, to, um, you know, uh, what the circumstances are at the premises and then decide uh, at the end whether each um, date should be granted or not. Because I think you're, okay. considering, it's, you're considering all the same facts for each application. Is that yeah. correct, Suba? Is that fair? That's right, yes. Yes. So yep. those conditions will be yeah. for individual decision for all the three items, but the, because it's the same premises and it's kind of the same event and timings, the members can consider as kind of one agenda for all those three of them and the decisions can be made on an individual basis. Yes. So so basically you can you can consider everything together if you want to and then decide individually about the you can add in additional questions about each individual date as you go along in the uh, procedure if you want to do it that way, or do you want to deal with them as three separate applications? It's entirely up to you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, for Janet Thomas. Uh, thanks for the advice, Amanda. Thanks, Chair. Uh, considering the uh, advice from my legal support, my uh, suggestion would be to do all three applications together because okay. they're similar applications, but on the different days. Yeah, Councillor Root? No, I agree. I mean, essentially we're gonna be hearing the same evidence, but that same evidence may relate to different dates slightly differently. Um, yeah. So we can take each date separately as, as an indep independent decision at the end of it, but taking all the evidence together rather than hearing the same thing three times makes absolute sense to me. Yeah, I mean, there is uh, there is a little bit of an anomaly there. For two of the applications are under Amir Zar, and one of them's under Serac, uh, is it Goetim Tesfa? Uh, so maybe when it comes to these, both of you will maybe want to speak uh, about your respective um, applications, yeah? Does that make sense? Um, so at this stage, I'm going to bring in the applicants then um, to 
uh, talk about why you want these um, and how you can justify them. So I don't know who wants to speak. Is it Mr. Tesfa or Amir? Um, Amir, uh, you were down for the 24th and also for the 1st. Um, so maybe start with that. Chair, would you mind if I interject at this point? Um, I'm, I'm willing to present on, on all three, given the fact that it's both my premises and I work alongside Amir as the um, operations okay. manager, if that's okay. Yep. Thank okay. you, Chair. Um, just, just, to, just to start, um, I just want to make it very clear that the the, the um, it's it is important to point out that um, it, it, there has been amendments and the on the first which will be the jet which will be the first of uh, January we are seeking to only extend 90 minutes and that's only for alcohol sales and that's 90 minutes we, we from 12 pm from 12 um, for, um, one minute past 12 19 minutes extension and that's just purely for alcohol sales there'll be no um um we pulled out the entertainment there'll be no live music or djs it is just purely 90 minutes and that will be um playing low level background music no entertainment whatsoever is that on the, the 24th and that, that that'll be on the first apologies the first on the first yeah and that's only on the ground floor the problem is, Mr. Tesla, we can we can only really consider what we've got in front of us. Okay, so um, yes, on the, on the 24th, we've got um, the event will be on in the basement level. So we have um, an event in the basement level, and that will be until. Um, so I just look for my notes. It's so the 24th is the application is for the basement only, and yes, that is seeking an extension until 4 a.m. And that is just an event for the basement only. Yeah. The ground floor Mr. Will Tesla, not one, one second. What mm -hmm. you don't understand is we've got a, an applications, three applications in front of us with certain information on those okay. applications. Those amendments that you're that you're referring to have not been accepted by anybody. Okay. Um, so what's in front of us is what we will be considering, unless okay. of course when we, when we have a discussion at the end we change our mind. But at the moment we're we're, we're just looking at what we've got in the application. So if you could just talk to that, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So, so the application that we put forward for, um, so, so the application that we put forward for on the twenty fourth is in the basement only. So that's yep. that's what you have, and um, we there'll be um, an event. And that's a, Bol a Bollywood themed music event. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So that's at the basement level. Uh, it will be um, it's fully contained in the basement, and um, um, and that will go on till till till, till four o'clock in the morning, um, which I believe. And it's um, and it's solely for the basement and nothing at the ground floor. Will you be serving drinks until four, or will you be serving drinks until three thirty? I think it's correct. Amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And so it'll just be a time for um, you serve. We'll serve drinks until three thirty, and then it'll be half an hour um, clearing clearing the 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 um, the bar area. It'll be fully staffed with um, security, uh, bar staff, cloakroom attendants, and um, and managers on site. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Yeah. You want to carry on about the other ones? Yeah, okay. And then moving on to the 27th. Um, the 27th, again, is just for the basement. So the upstairs venue will not be, um, the ground floor venue will not be operational, will not open. And this is um, an event called uh, In the Dark. And it is an event um, playing, um, again, uh, music in the basement, just solely in the basement, serving um, refreshment drinks and so on, fully staffed and security on site um, with managers in attendance. Um, is this the Boxing Day special? This will be the Boxing Day special, correct. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And um, to just get my notes, sorry. Um, and so, again, the ground floor will be completely closed to the public. It is a private event. Uh, the ground floor will be cl completely closed to the public. So there's no event taking place at the ground this floor. This is the 27th, you said. So the 27th. Private event. So just, yeah. Um, and on the first. Um, the first is um, is the application that will be put in for the ground floor. Application is only willing to extend until 90 minutes beyond the time that we, we, we normally go to, which is 12 p.m. 12 a.m. Yeah. So it is an extension until uh, for 90 an extension 90 minutes, and and this will com comprise of the sales of alcohol. No loud music at all will be played, um, and no DJs and no live music, um, as we've re uh, we've requested to withdraw. The entertainment uh, element completely from from initially, so it, it it is just ninety minutes with background pub music and um, at low level. So okay, that will be on the first. Okay, 
I've got a couple of uh, hands up there from members, uh, Mr. Tesfa, so I would like to bring in Councillor Fajana Thomas, please. Chair, as Mr. Tesfa finish his presentation, I'm indicating after him. Just yeah. have, you, have you finished, Mr. Tesfa? Yes, I have finished my presentation. Thank you. Okay. Right. Oh, uh, Chair, I'm just wondering, probably at this point, maybe through Amanda or the licensing officer, because uh, the presentation, uh, Mr. Tesfa presentation, uh, uh, is actually focusing on the amendment they've sent, which mm. I believe we cannot uh, take into consideration at this hearing what we are doing here is the application you sent in the only changes correct me again if i'm wrong is would be for you to withdraw the current application and resubmit another application rather than us looking at the amendment you were talking about yeah, uh, there may may not be enough time for that though council vagina thomas Subai, you want to come in, then? Well, that would not be. Uh, thank you. If you want to come in, thank you, Chair. So, yes, um, because the notice has to be given at least within five clear working days. So, it's too late to accept and um, a new notice for the 24th and for the 27th as well. And for the New Year's, um, and for the new year's one we can receive an amended notice by today so that's the only t amendment notice which so i mean the new notice which we can receive is by today the deadline kind of thing and but but again it has to go through the consultation process as such but yeah it's too late for the 24th and the 27th uh, what we are looking at is what is in the application that have been submitted before today not any amendment or uh, suggestions made by Mr. Tesfa at this point. That's right, so, councillors, because a temporary notice can only be modified before it can come to the hearing if it's been agreed with the responsible authorities, which is the police and the environmental protection. So in this case, it's the environmental protections. But it's for the members. The only decision the members can make today is whether to serve a counter notice or not. Thank you. You, okay, I just want to bring in. Sorry, uh, Mr. Tesfa, I can see you're waiting to come in. I just want to bring in Councillor Root first. Sure. Yeah, I, I um, I just was wondering if there is any way around this, and in, in as much as, um, Mr. Tesfa has made it clear that he's not intending to run the event on the first, for instance, until four o'clock in the morning. Um, but, and I'm sure he understands that we are not being awkward when we say we can't take that into consideration, we're just sticking with the rules as they are. We can't change the rules, that's the law of the land. So we can only look at what we've got so far. Two questions really. First is, if it were possible for Mr. Tesfa to come to an agreement within the scope of this meeting with the environmental protection team, uh, where he was giving a solemn undertaking that uh, he was going to do as he sets out, as in the amendments that he wants to make um is that something that we could take into a consideration when deciding whether to grant sort of a slightly more excessive tens license um because we would have all sat here and seen him undertake to restrict to the basement only and to um and to close down at 1 30. um is that a, pos a possibility i suppose that's a question to amanda really um yeah amanda but do you want to come in on well, that one um yes i mean um i think it is really whether or not the environmental officers feel that they would be prepared to accept those amendments at this late stage what i was going to suggest though is i do completely understand what the principal licensing officer is saying about not changing the notice you can't obviously change the application that's been presented but like any application that comes in what's on the application we have to consider that uh, sorry apologies for the background noise here sorry sorry um and uh, basically what they, I was going to ask is, could we just consider what the applicant has said, uh, sorry, the premises license holder has said, um, as um, background information rather than an amendment to his um, actual application? Do you know what I mean? So he's just trying to explain away what he intends to do on the day. 
So I think all we can do is consider the application as it is, but maybe just consider it as background information. So if he, yeah. he let's say he's granted the 10 until to, uh, to allow him for the hours he's asked for, but then if he chooses to close early, that's his choice. How about that? Could we do it as a compromise? So what he said so far, let's take that as background information. That's not necessarily going to persuade you because you have to consider um, based on the application that he's made, whether or not to grant him the, um, uh, the allow him to have this event or whether you decide to issue a counter notice, which means that he cannot have the event. So um, it's your decision to decide that. And so um, uh, Mr. Um, Tesla, uh, you have to you know, bear in mind that their decision today is whether or not to issue a counter notice, which is to prevent the app, um, the event going ahead. So, so that's what their main job is today. You can explain what your job is to explain is that why is it they should allow you to have this event? So make sure what you said so far, does it help them to understand why you should be allowed to have the event and not have it um, cancelled? Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Absolutely. And yeah, Chair. Off you go, Mr. Tuffy. You can come back now. Thank you, thank you Chair. Thank you, Amanda. Um, I think I just want to make it very clear, and I, I think it might be helpful if um, if I firstly point out that an email was sent to um, both Gertz and Rabia um, with the changes um, amendments that we were seeking. That it's only ninety minutes beyond 12, 12 a.m. and and not until four a.m. for the first. So we we had already sent that email across, and I hope. What that date was, did you send it on? Um, we sent it yesterday, I believe. That may be too late because okay. obviously it hadn't come to anyone's attention till today. Okay, that, that's fine. And I guess what um, the, um, the, the point that's been made, and that's really clever um, angle from Penny and um, um, sort of Councillor um, Penny, that, um, that we, we are not seeking to go until 4 a.m. and we're not seeking to play live music and we're not seeking to play a DJ music. We're just simply allowing, uh, seeking to have background music at low level that would enable our, our um, clients, customers, to be able to say cheers at 12 o'clock and we can see them off into the new year up until 1.30. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that's it, literally. It's not our intention is not to cause any disturbance. We understand there has been some level of disturbance and primarily we've taken the property about a year ago. We came into a place where it was needed a lot of work and we're, we're now working with the sound engineers and acoustic engineers to ensure that this really wonderful old building is brought back to wonderful use and we can have the proper sound acoustic treatments that we need. But a lot of this takes time and a lot of energy which we are investing and we're here for a long term. But on this particular occasion, which is the 1st of January, we are just seeking low level background music to allow our customers to be able to enjoy the, into the new year at four. Even if we were granted until four, we, we wouldn't want to stay until four. We want just one and a half, one and a half hours, so 90, 90 minutes, just to be able to to have that um, that, that that momentous occasion. Really, that's that's all. Yeah, but the, the, there are other amendments as well, Mr. Tesman, in, in, in terms of the the ground floor and basement, for example, it was in the application for the twenty seventh. Which was you mentioned both and now it's just the basement so there is a kind of amendment there was that was that offered up at the same time as the other ones uh yes so i mean um so the email that we sent across yesterday um it, it clarifies that you know the the the, the basement is so the 24th and 27th will only be the basement so there's no activity no events taking place on the okay. ground floor on both those okay. days yeah cool. great Councillor root uh i got two clarifications really the first is um when it comes to the basement rather than the ground floor um i'd quite like to understand the difference between that in terms of the sort of noise that is going to be emitted um so so you know how much of a significant change is that in terms of the the application and the second thing i was going to say was i mean essentially we could find ourselves in a situation here where we're making a decision on trust um that uh, Mr. Tesfer says that he's not going to use the ground floor and that he's not going to go beyond 1.30 on the 1st of January. And um, if we've given the... Could you just bear with me one second? I'm just going to shut, shut people up here. <laughs> um, sorry, that's... <laughs> apologies. It's a busy house at this time of the year. I'm sorry. Um, uh, where was I? Yes, so so if we were to grant this these tens applications, we would be granting them on the basis of what is on front in front of us on the paper. Mm. But we may be minded to bear in mind the background information that we've been told by Mr. Tesfer and take him on trust 
that he's going to do what he's saying. If we grant these 10 applications, we will have no legal recourse if you break that agreement. Yeah. On the other hand, and I think this is quite significant and probably worth checking with Amanda again, if you were to ever apply for another TENS agreement in the future and mm. you have broken your trust with us, we mm. will, I believe, be entitled to take that into consideration when we were considering any future TENS applications from you. Is that correct, Amanda? Yes, the, 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 the previous operation, the previous way that they've operated the premises, how they've dealt with other temporary event notices will be taken into consideration on any future application. Yes. You, you can see where I'm going with this. What I'm saying, basically, is if you give us our word, that you're, your word that you're going to do this, and then you break your word, you can forget about TENS in the future because we're never going to believe you again. That's the, the gist of where I'm coming from. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that's clear. That's clear, Councillor Roots. Councillor Janet Thomas? Sorry, just to pick, yeah, totally agree with what Councillor Root just said, but based on that, just want to go into, again, a matter of clarification and what has happened in the past. We've, in the past, the reason we're here today was because of issues of noise in the past from these premises and two of those past noise uh, cases have come happened on the day of tens within the premises so what is that saying to us or if Mr. Tesfa want to say something about about that. The Environmental Protection Officer has given a few dates on or uh, we got dates, although in your form or uh, some of your form you said no to previous uh terms, but our understanding is in this calendar year you've already had eleven terms and two of those noises that have been recorded from your premises the one that happened on the 2nd of december as mm -hmm. well as the 8th of december are days where you've applied for tents you were uh, uh, using uh, temporary event notices to operate on those two days yeah. what what is that telling us mr tesfa sure chair if you'd like me to yeah, yes, please. Okay. Yes, please. Thank, thank you, Councillor Thomas. Um, it's brought to so we work. We look at the bookings for each of the noise complaints that uh, Gertrude has talked has talked about, and, and all, all, all in all of those, we found that a lot of the the impact that was coming from is actually the ground floor because the ground floor is isn't as well contained or, or um, has enough sound acoustics, which is why we are withdrawing our live music and any entertainment from the ground floor on the first. So in the basement level is where it's contained. A lot of the noises, the two tents that was applied for, which is on the 2nd of December, uh, we had DJs playing music on the ground floor, hence why we, there was a, a noise level complaint. On the 8th of December, we had live uh, music, the, you know, played blues and, and so, and there was music on the ground floor. And this was part of the Christmas party, which was on the 8th of December. So there's two tents that we applied for. They both had noise issues because of the fact that we were playing live music. And the reason why we're pulling the live music element on any entertainment from the ground floor is because we know that we have sound acoustic issues that we had to resolve. So these two uh, complaints that we've got are very serious for us. So hence why we're pulling all entertainment from the ground floor. We know that the basement is well contained and when we do start music in there, we have it's concrete above and enough structures to ensure that the noise does not travel upstairs. But we know now from the complaints that we've had from our sound engineers, that um, acoustic treatment uh, engineers that they've told us and the complaints that we can clearly, clearly see is that the building is old and it needs modifications. So hence why we pulled all entertainment on the ground floor until we do that. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tesla, for that. I think we'll, we'll bring in the environmental protection <coughs> officers now, I think, at this stage. Members, if that's okay. Um, great, thank you. Um, thank okay, you. so Kadeen and Gertz, I don't know who 
if maybe both of you at different times want to come in and speak to this. Um, uh, so how do you want to, how do you want to do this, Gertz and Kadeem? Thank you, uh, Councillor Smith. I'd just like to start. Uh, I'll start the main um, uh, the main argument off, and obviously Kadeem is the uh, uh, is the ward officer who's actually dealt with um, Mr. Tesfa and, and Copper Cats historically. Mm -hmm. But just to give you a very brief background, obviously you've read uh, the objection, but um, Mm -hmm. I just want to thank um, everyone for turning up here at short notice today. Um, obviously, environmental protection has objected to all three temporary event notices. A very brief history is is the fact that uh, we've had a history of complaints from uh, residents alleging uh, disturbances from music. Environmental protection has received over thirty six complaints in relation to live and amplified music <coughs> since March twenty twenty three. The most recent complaint was received on the 8th of the 12th at 2329 uh, and obviously previously on Sorry, the 14th. Gosh, did you say 30, 36? Yeah, over 30, yeah, so uh, over 36 complaints in relation to live and amplified music since March 2023. Okay. Coach, why uh, wasn't that in the application? Well, that information, I didn't see that information in the actual application. Oh, you mean the objection? Apologies. I've I've only recently um, obviously started going through the database, and that's just an o a rough overview since um, March 2023. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. Um, the most recent complaint was received on the 8th of uh, December 2329. Previously, um, earlier on in the year in April, on the 14th at 2205, environmental protection officers witnessed a statutory noise nuisance and sub subsequently uh, an abatement notice under Section 80 of the Environmental Protection Act was served on the directors of the company. Uh, officers have actually since witnessed, witnessed two further breaches of the abatement notice on the, on the 16th of June uh, at 22.15 and, and on the 2nd of December uh, 2023 at uh, 10 past midnight. Uh, environmental protection obviously still have concerns with additional regulated entertainment. This, ev uh, this event could have meant, uh, these events could amount to a further statutory noise nuisance, hence underlining the uh, public nuisance objective. Yeah. Well, uh, do you want to just talk to the 1110s that they've had? Because obviously two of those, um, there were problems. The, the other nine, mm -hmm. um, were there any complaints around the other nine as far as you know? Oh, I don't I don't have that uh, those that information directly in front of me. Okay. Um, and the other question... Uh, goes, might be able to answer those questions uh, in, in relation to the premises. Uh, okay. and what, you witnessed as well yeah and, and maybe uh, Kadeen if you want to come in you can maybe speak to the sort of the, the difference between the ground floor and the basement really uh, have a lot of these complaints come when there's been things happening in the ground floor um the complaints to my understanding it's not clear if they are coming from the basement but they're definitely coming from the ground floor so just to add to what Gertch um, has already told you so I personally witnessed the nuisance um, back in June myself Mm -hmm. and it was absolutely horrendous no one should have to live like that um there were f the floor was vibrating the windows are rattling and um i spoke to the applicant on many many occasions and explained that there was a problem um we had a sort of informal agreement that he wouldn't use the ground floor and my colleague prior to that actually spoke to him um brockwell and explained to him that there was an issue asked him to disconnect certain speakers to try and help with the noise nuisance problem and to my understanding, I think he did disconnect a few speakers, but the noise nuisance continued. So I said, please from, don't use from, from, from the ground floor. From the ground floor. Right. Okay. So um, I asked him not to use it, and we agreed not to do that. And he even admitted himself that he continued to do it. And on the days, even in his own email, he used the, he used that particular part of the building, and there was a statutory nuisance. And it could, uh, just because we hadn't witnessed any statutory nuisance between June and December, we've still had complaints regularly between that time period. Um, when we have the out of our service, people call. If it's very busy, we may not be able to get there. We may not be able to get the applicant. There could be all sorts of reasons why we haven't been able to personally witness the nuisance. Um, yes, and um, I, I've explained to him he's not he's not it's not it's not it's not new to him that there is a problem so on in december the last time our colleagues witnessed the nuisance they were not clear if the if it was coming from the ground floor or the basement and um, he said he's engaged with um 
acoustic consultants, but I haven't had any evidence of that at all. He mentioned some companies. Yeah, Kadeen, you've just said something very important. It wasn't clear whether it was the, the basement or, or the ground floor. Why was but, it not clear? Um, the, my colleagues here, they've just said it's not it's not clear. So you can hear the music, you know it's coming from downstairs, but it, when you have a, a band upstairs and also music in the basement, they don't know if it, which particular site it's coming from because when they went back upstairs and asked them to turn the music down, sorry, can I just, I'm just going to have a quick look at what the out of hours officers have said. There's been 36 complaints, Kadeen, uh, as, yeah. uh, as was mentioned by Gert. Uh -huh. um, out of those 36, I mean, obviously, I'm talking about kind of visible presence of anything going on on the ground floor. Out of those 36 complaints, uh -huh. how many how many of those were there, was there something happening on the ground floor that you could see? Can you answer that question? I can. One moment, please. So the three nuisances were definitely music coming from the ground floor. I witnessed one of them myself and our, another colleague witnessed another. So there was definitely something happen, happening on the ground floor, yeah? Yes. Yeah. And out of the 36, do you roughly, do you have any idea how, how, how many? No, because we've only been able to witness on three occasions okay. after the notice was served. But the complaints in between, they don't say, it's just the complainant saying, We've got issues with noise nuisance. Please, can you come and visit? But we've been able to witness it ourselves on three occasions. Yeah. So sorry to probe to probe, probe on this. It's just that we just need to know if the basement's safe for, for for music in this respect in terms of kind of noise, ASB, and spillover. Um, okay, so that's what I'm trying to get at, really. Right, the basement is not clear. It's okay. not clear because the times that we've witnessed, there's been music on both, on both, but. But okay. we believe that the, the highest issue is definitely with the ground floor. But what I want to say is that um, we've had no evidence of any um, acoustic work to the basement. We, we don't know if it's been sound insulated. We don't know what the setup is down there. We don't know if um, if he plays music is, is going to contribute to the nuisance. We don't know any of that because he hasn't provided any evidence to 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 convince us that noise music is not going to be ongoing. He says yeah. it's only going to be background music, but I have been there on, on, on occasions where background music was played. It was very loud. We couldn't really have a conversation. Okay. Okay, thank you. I've got uh, members who would like to come in and ask some questions. Uh, Mr. Tesva, I can see. Let's bring in members first with some questions. So, Councillor Pajan and Thomas, please. Oh, uh, my question is uh, to both Mr. Tesfa and to Kadeen. Obviously, with the um, complaints would be from residents next door or around these premises. Has there been any attempt or engagement in terms of or uh, in regards to the noise from Mr. Tesfa at, at all, maybe Mr. Tesfa will be in a better position to actually answer that, but welcome Kadeen's uh, input as well, whether the residents that are calling the council about this nuisance noise, whether there's been any engagement at all. Thank you. Uh, Chair, if you allow me, I'd, I'd be happy to answer that, um, Councillor Thomas. Yeah, go on ahead. Thank you. Um, so the answer to that question is yes. Um, and actually, you know, one, one of our objectives is to make sure that we, we, we know that there is noise issues coming from the ground floor. We, we're not, we're new, to, we're not, it's, it's nothing new. Our main intention, intention is to work with the people that live above us. I know how difficult it is. I've lived in an apartment, in a apartment above a bar. I know how difficult it is, especially if you have a family, whatever. There are six flats upstairs. And the only person that's been affected at the moment is the ground floor, the A. Um, I'm not gonna actually say the name, the, 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 the sorry, apologies. It's one flat that, that, that is above our, 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 our uh, ground floor <laughs> and bar. Now, we know we know that we've 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 met, we've met with um, sound acoustic engineers, and I appreciate Kadeen said that we, we haven't um, 
mentioned who they are, but we it, it is a lengthy process and we've worked with a few now that, that are given an advice. We know that the issue is in, in directly above us. And I, I happened to meet the person coming into the flat and I was able to get the number and, and we've been in communication with that person. And so I sent him an email, a message, a text message, whenever we have an event, they'll come back and, and they've actually said, can you turn it down, turn it up, turn it down. So we know that we, the ground floor is an issue in terms of when we play any amplified music. So we've decided we've take we've pulled out all live entertainment from the upstairs. And I think that's that's an intent. So to answer your question, yes, we are in regular contact with the person upstairs. Mm -hmm. We we a good contact, good relationship where we we we, we talk to each other and they'll come back and say thank you it is quieter it's better it's not bad it's bad so we are in communication because our objective is to make sure that we work with these people because we're here to stay the second thing as well i would like to mention and i think um the chair brought it up and it's a very very good point is a distinction between the basement and the upstairs now the basement was completed uh, the operation the building and the basement was was built in 2014 so i should imagine it's done to the highest building control specifications i'd also like to add um bring um the chair to the chair's um attention that we had um two events last week and we we're permitted to do so in the basement up until the times that we, we we're allowed to so we're open till midnight and on in the basement weekdays a thursday friday saturday we're open till 2 a.m so we can apply uh, put music on within the time frame suit that 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 is appropriate and um were you know not not, not too loud we had uh two two events one on wednesday um at the basement we had one on saturday and both we had no complaints for and that was just the Wednesday and the Saturday just gone. We had no complaints. So we know that the basement to some degree has a good acoustic level insulation. So there may be some works that need to be done, but we know that it, it, is, it is adequate. What we do definitely 100% know is that the ground floor needs acoustic treatments. It does, and there is issues of noise, as Kadeem pointed out quite rightly. Okay, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I've got, I've got uh, a bad cough at the moment. Um, there's no mention of a noise limiter anywhere on the premises, either the basement or the ground floor. <clears throat> so that could be um, obviously a consideration, Mr. Tespa, yeah. going going forward, certainly for the ground floor. Um, but I'll just bring in Councillor Root now. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I think one of the, the issues that I'm interested in is the fact that the noise complaints have all been before midnight, as far as I can see, from, from what uh, Kadeen was saying, the ones that... Uh, that Gert referred to, they seem to be um, quite. Oh, actually, not not one was at twelve ten. So yeah. they're they're not very very late. These noise complaints, they're you know late-ish, but they're not in the sort of scope of of a tens license. Generally speaking, they're before that, which is a bit worrying, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> um, that there's so much noise coming even before the early hours that people are feeling minded to complain. Um, the other thing that I'd like to ask Gertrude and Kadeen is, is whereabouts the complaints are coming from, because I know the area, as I'm sure do Councillor Fajana Thomas and Councillor Smith quite well, um, and in a sense, you know, you're fronting onto Kingsland Road, which is a busy road and, and noisy quite a lot. But behind you is, are lots of flats uh, where lots of people live. And there is, I know, a sort of an echo chamber element to those flats because I've spoken to residents there, not about your premise, but about other premises and the problems that they have with noise. So they are acutely sensitive in those flats to noise. So I wonder whilst you say that you have a particular problem with the person who lives nearest to the ground floor where the bigger problem is and that you're in contact with them, I can see that that's a good thing. But I wonder if, if Kadeen's impression is that that is indeed where most of the 36 complaints have come from or whether or not we're getting some from the flats and, and elsewhere. In other words, how widespread is the noise problem? Um, if you could give us a sense of that, Kadeen, that would be really helpful. Yeah, um, so we have more than one complainant and um, most of the complainants do come from the adjoining flats above, but we do have some complaints from across the road, flats across the road, because if you know the Copper Cats, it does have large uh, glass frontage. So when they have the bands playing, the music, it does, it does um, propagate across the road and it can cause problems in that direction as well. But not as far as you're aware in Dalston Square. Oh, no. 
no. Oh, no, 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 no. It wouldn't go that far across the road up. Okay. Left and right. No, I mean, that's important, really, because in terms of how many people might be affected, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there are hundreds of people who are living in the flats above Dalston Square. And if they were going to be affected, then it would be that would sort of potentially account for why you've got so many complaints, but that you don't think they are affected. So that's, that's good to know. No, it's because this music is particularly extreme. I've, I've heard it myself. And um, it, it's just, even when you consider the noise from the bus garage, the road and everything else, it's just beyond what is acceptable even for the area. Okay. There's a variety of different, <clears throat> for example, this, this uh, on the 24th, it's Bollywood themed uh, Bangra night. On the 27th, it's deep tech, Afro, I'm a piano house music, so it's club orientated kind of stuff. Probably quite heavy bass, I'd imagine. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Tesfa, I mean, <clears throat> It's a difficult one. If you just imagine, uh, put yourself in our shoes for a minute. We've heard there's been 36 complaints across, you know, across the, 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 the very recent period. It's too many, frankly, um, you know, and that's very worrisome for me. Um, and it's probably worrisome for members and it's certainly worrisome, worrisome for, for Kadeen. I think what we're trying to establish today really is, is if that basement is safe um, for these events coming up, considering you know, you've had abatement orders and there's been breaches and there's been 36 complaints. You know, things are just not looking good on paper. Um, uh, Kadeem, you know, do you want to come in and just 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 speak about the basement a bit more? I mean, is there anything more we know about this basement that, that could reassure us that there's going to be no problems there? Well, I don't know a lot about the basement myself. I mean, I've visited it. I've, um, when I last visited, it was being fitted out but I don't know anything about the acoustic condition of the basement. I, I don't know, uh, well, naturally, because it's further away from the complainant, it will reduce some of the noise impact, but I don't know if it's going to be reduced to a point where it's acceptable. And I think in addition to that, um, the fact that the applicant was aware, acutely aware that there are noise issues and still continued to operate in a similar manner and, and they're only making amendments now at this very late stage when we've come in to say enough is enough. I feel that they're not a trustworthy operator. So even if they say, OK, I've engaged in an acoustic consultant, I believe the basement is fine. I mean, I've had no evidence of that at all. So I'm just of the opinion that we need to um, serve a counter notice to this one and have them go away and have have someone who specialises in this type of dealing with acoustic, the acoustic condition of this type of building, go away, discuss that with us, and then we can go from there. Kadeen, are you talking about all three when you say this one? All three, please. Okay, that's, that's, that's very clear. Um, members, do you have any further questions you want to come in with at all? Just looking. Uh, no, not, 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 not from me. Okay, Jay. thank you, uh, Mr. Tesla. I mean, uh, I, I, this is not really the place for this, but obviously, I think uh, having a, uh, an acoustic report, um, working with the local authority on that, is really quite important for your venue going forward. I would suggest both in in the basement and on the ground floor. Um, yeah. The idea of having a noise limiter as well somewhere, maybe on the ground floor, if that is the, the exceptional area that's causing problems, would be something to consider. Or maybe even what you program in there, for example, would be consideration as well. Um, I see no mention, it's not relevant to this particular um, case we're looking at today, but I see no mention of a dispersal policy um, in general in your conditions. And I think it might be worth thinking about doing one of those as well. Um, and also, I just wanted to just check and clarify how many people you can fit into the basement. What's the capacity of the basement? Because I know the capacity of the whole venue, I believe. You mentioned it's 150 in the conditions, although 180 has been mentioned in the, in the uh, application. Yes, correct, Chair. So 150 is, is, is the capacity that we've got. Uh, we have got, we can probably comfortably fit more 
but we choose to have between 150 to 180. Is that the whole venue, ground and basement? or Just, it, it just, it, just on the basement level. Just the basement area. Yeah. Okay. And, and, up, and upstairs on the ground floor, ground floor, we're, 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 we're quite privileged in the sense that we, we, we do have a sort of garden. We've got um, a wider space and it's, it's um, we can we can fit 150 as well. But we generally don't tend to push it to that level. We tend to go maybe 90 to, to, to 100. Um, but on, on, I just want to add, Chair, if you allow me to do so, um, just to reiterate very, very quickly what Kadeen's point was that um, um, that no no bands are playing and uh, so bands playing um that, that we, we we intend to have no, we we do know we understand that what Kadeen is saying there is issues with noise up on the ground floor when bands and djs play and uh, to a loud level we know that and we, we're not intending to do so on new year's eve that is completely we, we're not denying that there has been noisy issues that's a fact and that's why we're spending a significant amount of money to employ acoustic uh, engineer, um, it's a technician. Uh, we will have the sound limiters, as, as you pointed out, Chair. Um, we do all the series and we work with the council, you know, going forward in the new in, in the new year. But at this particular moment, what we're applying for on the ground floor is pulling out the element of any entertainment issues. We know that when we have had uh, events in the basement that we've not had complaints in the last Wednesday and Saturday, as I pointed out. So I feel that I, I can understand completely where this is going and I can completely, I completely understand where this is coming from. Um, but I just want to point out that on the first, what we're not applying for is any entertainment related um, yeah, Mr. Tedford, just just uh, on a, on, a, on a kind of um, f physical sort of point about the the, the physical structure of the of yeah. the building. Is there a door, for example, between you know the basement and the ground floor? There Are is there two there doors. Is I mean, how does it work? There is absolutely. So on the on the ground floor, we've got uh, we've got double doors. So you come in and there's a, uh, there's, a there's an area where uh, you. you the reception area and then yeah, i'm asking about the basement between and then the basement in the ba in the basement quite rightly exactly as well so there's a separate entrance in the basement that you would go down down the steps and then there's another door that leads you into the actual room the basement so there's, so there's a door at ground floor level and there's a door at the bottom as well yeah and there's a stairs in between right so, interesting. So what, okay so we, we close the doors in the basement so te technically when there's music playing in the basement the doors will be closed at the basement level and then there's stairs that lead to the ground floor and the ground floor will obviously be open yeah uh, how many stairs how many stairs roughly down there uh it is a is a double it's uh it's it's uh one long set of stairs and then uh, just a short step up so, okay what about 10 steps or something like that 10 10, 10 15 steps yeah okay yeah. cool um suba do you want to come in Sorry, Chair, it's just to let Councillor Root is not in the call for the last three, four oh, minutes. Thank you for highlighting that. I didn't notice that, actually. <laughs> um, sorry about that. I didn't notice that she popped off the call. Um, do you want to advise Amanda about that? Um, yes, um, we'll, we'll just we'll just hold the meeting just for a few minutes to establish what's happened. OK. Yeah. Is that someone going to call her? You, you want, want me to, to give her a call? I'll give her a call. Yes, please. Um, okay, we'll just hold on for a couple of minutes yeah. until we, we're nearly we're nearly there, Tesla, That's fine. Mr. Tesla. That's fine. Chair, would you mind if I get a glass of water while, while No, no, wait? go for it whilst we can. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Suba, for that. I didn't even realise. <laughs> I'm so focused on on the people I'm kind of looking at on the screen. If everyone could just bear with us. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Chair, uh, Penny said her computer just uh, froze it up and went into blank. So she's oh. trying to log on with the phone or another device okay great so um we... well i think we could probably continue she, she did she did uh imply that she'd finished her interrogation or oh, she's back she, she's back now <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah i can't hear you you're on mute uh councillor root Okay, I'm so, I'm yeah. terribly sorry about that. My basically, it's a technical thing. My computer just lost Wi-Fi and and won't get and it hasn't come back again. So I'm 
I'm 5 ing you now. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for that, for, for, for uh, accessing the meeting in another way. That's great. Yeah, I'm um, very sorry. Um, well, uh, yes, I mean, I, I've obviously missed a little bit. Um, I think you I, I was just going to sort of... We were, we were waiting we were waiting. Oh, that's for really you. kind of you. Very, I'm very sorry about that. Thank you very much indeed. Um, okay, I, I was going to sort of uh, lay my cards on the table a little bit, to be honest. Um, okay, go on. <laughs> Uh, I suppose my view about this is that um, the basement is a little bit of an untested and untried place. Mm. Um, and I'm very nervous about an, a Christmas Eve event, which could end up upsetting a lot of families if uh, lots of children are kept awake until four o'clock in the morning. Um, so I'm given that we don't know, we, we're you know, we have no other evidence other than the applicant's word for it that the ba the basement is safe sound wise. Um, I would be quite reluctant to grant the the tens on the on the Christmas Eve. Um, the other two dates, I'm I'm sort of a bit more um, open, a bit more fluid with. I think, um, but one is for four o'clock in the morning. That's very very late. Um, so again. I would, and, and given that we can't adjust these as such, I would be minded to not go with the 27th because it's until four o'clock in the morning. Um, and the one on the, the one that on the, on New Year's Eve, I think I'd be a bit more um, amenable to because people expect New Year's Eve to be noisy. And in a sense, it would give the venue the opportunity to do something um, which uses the basement I can't remember actually if the ground floor is going to be used as well on New Year's Eve, is it? Um, so, the, so the ground floor, thank you, uh, Councillor. The ground floor will be, um, will be will, so we're pulling all regulated entertainment from the ground floor. So there will be no regulated entertainment. It will just be background music up until one thirty. Okay. Okay. So, so in that case, we would have a, a bit of an opportunity if we did grant the New Year's Eve one to just find out a little bit more about whether or not the basement is um capable of withholding yeah. the sound yeah so that, that's sort of where i'm feeling at the moment that's i don't know how the people are feeling but that's yeah. that's my feeling okay thank you for that councillor root um i just want to ask uh Kadeen and gurch um just on those amendments um i know you've put a very strong position forward Kadeen, on rejection of all three but just on the amendments how do you feel about about kind of accepting or rejecting those amendments because obviously we have what, what is in front of us um but it's been interesting to hear your point of view on the amendments like the use of just the basement and also the timings on the on the third one kadeen or gert mm. no i think I, I think i'm actually in agreement with the councillor root i think that's quite a sensible option <laughs> okay um, I mean, in regards to the basement, like you say, it's untested, but you can still have problems with, because the flats above, they have shared walls, you yeah. can still get something called frank, uh, flanking transmission. So it, the walls themselves act as a speaker. Yeah. So. Okay, well, that's, that's yeah. clear. Thank you very much for that uh, uh, point of clarification there, Kadeen. That's interesting. Okay, so I think we should move off the discussion now. I think we've had a, a, a reasonable discussion around this um in terms of uh, fairness and everything um so now we just like to go to closing remarks so i'd just like to bring in either gertrude or Kadeen just with, with quick couple of minutes closing remarks on this you have made yourself very clear Kadeen, so we're, we're, we're aware of that already if there's anything else you want to add then please do so now um, no thank you okay good yeah, uh, just final comments. I just um, want the panel to consider uh, the example, the precedent that we could be setting here today by allowing these three temporary event notices to go ahead when essentially environmental protection officers have witnessed three, not one, but three mm. statutory noise nuisances. So that basically involves an officer going inside the residence home and witnessing a nuisance on three occasions. And obviously we're sitting here today deliberating whether an extension of their normal premises license hours should go ahead for a temporary event notice. It's almost um, uh, as if we're rewarding um, possibly bad behaviour, basically. I just want the panel to consider that, obviously. Okay, thank you, Gertz. 
Thank you. That's uh, that's useful. Kadeem. Sorry, I just wanted to add that it's actually um it's actually five nuisances that we've witnessed because we had witnessed two before the notice was served. Okay, thank you for that. Um, I mean, Gert, you know, the environmental protection team, I mean, their views are very clear here. Um, they, 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 they are very frustrated with what's been going on, um, frankly, in, in, in your venue. Um, so do you just want to come back now? You've got a, a couple of minutes to come back. Mr. Tesfa. Oh, sorry, apologies. Um, I thought that question was to Gert. No, and, and quite, to, we, we, I held my hands up and we know that there's issues with the ground floor we've taken this venue about a year ago and we've done we've we've, been, we've put a lot of time and effort into upgrading what was a beautiful late victorian property and what is a beautiful late victorian property and we intend to keep that we've got some beautiful rustic element to it we know that there's work that need to be done for sound, sound acoustic paneling but before you do that you have to do your um um sound acoustic survey which which requires time and, and energy and i've spoken to Kadeen about that and we're in the process of doing that for the purpose of this um, um, three events, we've made it very clear that the basement, we've had events twice in the last week and we've had no complaints. We've pulled out the regulated entertainment for this New Year's Eve, which we're seeking to go on for a 90 minute extension and purely for the sales of alcohol, which will be playing um, just background music. And so we understand the position and we understand what's happened when we are very sorry. And we want to work with, with, with both the council and and, to, and, and the local residents, but the, the, the events that we're applying for are, are, are just for the two, two basement, the basement events and the, the, the ground floor, which, which is not regulated music. And that's, that's what I just want to Okay, say. thank you very much, Mr. Tesla. I mean, you, you know, you've heard all the stuff you need yeah. to hear. Really. If yeah. you want to go forward with this venue, really, it's really very, very important to work with the local authority and everybody else, um, you know, to, to try and make sure that this venue works in a safe way that doesn't, yeah cause any kind of noise nuisance for people and i would recommend dispersal policy looking at that as well yeah. and you can work with the local authority on that one uh, as well as all the other things i've mentioned but look, thank you everyone for attending this meeting um i think we'll call it to a close now there's nothing else on the agenda there are no uh further elements so nothing more to discuss so thank you very much for attending and i hope you uh, have a have a wonderful christmas and uh, a good new year everyone merry, merry christmas thank you chair thank you councillors merry christmas Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <clears throat>